recording and recording. All right. It begins in three, two, one. Coming up on TMS, it's been a long... It's supposed to be run. I put fun. It's been a long <laughs> run getting from there to here. The stick is now stuck. I never said I wanted to be born. Don't offend the Canadians. That looks like a fake toe to me. Call now. Your emails and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. I've just seen an advert for a job and I can't wait to find out more about it. And who can blame me when I'm told that for the lucky man who lands this job, the working day becomes one long tea break. I don't think I like the soy nut inclusions. <laughs> the Morning Stream. How dare you talk to me that way? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to TMS. It is the morning stream for February 7th, 2019. Scott Johnson here. Brian Ibbett there. Good morning. Hi, Scott Johnson. How are Hello. you? Oh, your sign I'm is good. done. What's your sign say? It's a, uh... It says uh, Cornea Molar Saga. Oh, I love that book. It's such a good book. Yes, the Cornea Molar Saga. It's the third book, really, in the series, because mm. uh, this is the one where uh, Brent uh, finally uh, gets his sword. Oh, good, his, Brent. Uh, <laughs> Good Brent. <laughs> the sword of Brent. He held it off That's the sword of Brent. such a great fantasy character name, right? Brent. Mm -hmm. you, never see, Hi, Brent. you never see Brent in a good fantasy book anymore. That's so true. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, that's, no, the, the molar part's appropriate because you still... Is your face yeah. still numb? Like, what's going on with your face? It's... Oh my, they shot me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah, it's still... It still feels like it's coming out of anesthesia but it feels better than it did yesterday it's just this is you know it's, it's so definitely weird. not right That's so it's weird. not right no. <laughs> it's not why right why um, you know the problem is i think uh maybe they hit a nerve that's like okay you know how people get that what's it called uh yeah i know the par face par paralysis thing? yeah my brother-in-law had it and he's doing pa way better uh, palsy now or uh yeah uh, pa 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 bell's, bell's, bell's palsy. palsy yeah Somebody named yeah. Bell was in charge of the palsy that day. Chris, Kristen Bell actually was the the person who oh, found this. Someone yeah. saw her and went, oh, and their face went slack. And they, <laughs> that's right. But uh, he had that for like six months and it finally, you know, dissipating. But uh, oh, it's possible what you've done is just, or what the dentist did rather, is nicked the nerve that's tied to that somehow. Maybe that's what happened. Yeah. So it's not right. going to cause it, but it may have been, I don't know. It's like having, what's it like? Uh, you know, somebody's doing a surgery. They're they're working on taking your spleen out, and they accidentally nick mm -hmm. your bowel or something mm -hmm. like that. Maybe that's what he could did. Could be. Yeah. Totally could be. Mm -hmm. Oh God, Jeannie's sending me a WebMD link. Do I even dare click a WebMD link, Jeannie? Come on now. Sure you do. Let's take a look here. Bell's palsy, right. uh, named after Kristen Bell. No, nope. Bell's palsy is a condition yep. in which oh. the muscles on one side of your face become weak or paralyzed. It affects only one side of your face at a time, causing it to droop or become stiff on that side. Uh, it's caused by some kind of trauma to the seventh cranial nerve. This is um, also called the facial nerve. Bell's palsy can happen to anyone, but it seems to occur more often in people who have diabetes or are recovering from viral infections. Uh, in the case of my brother-in-law, he had just gotten over like a horrendous flu, and then That's it happened. That's what I usually hear it uh, tied to. So I don't think this is it. I think this is... Uh... Because this, uh, this would be the whole side of my face. Oh yeah, you you don't you don't have this. There's you can't no have localized Bell's palsy. No, you'd smile and like only a, half your smile would work. This is a Tinker Bell's palsy, is what I have. Yeah, you got a little, just a little tiny bit. A lot just of a little Tinker Bell's palsy. A lot of people think they're having a stroke, but they're not. Uh, it's common and it goes away usually for most people. Some people it stays like for a really long time. I know a lady who still it still affects her. Uh, years later, yeah. but uh, yeah, you think you're. They don't know the direct cause though. They just think the virus thing has something to do with it. So sure. sure. Anyway, in your case, I think the guy just went in there and hit the wrong little space. Just went <sighs> and so. put some extra juice in the wrong hole, and boom. <laughs> That's it. Some juice in the wrong hole. Yeah. Show title or uh, or future uh, uh, audio clip for a mashup. Why Probably can't both, it be really? both? Yeah. Why can't it be yeah. both? Oh, now we have a link from. AnimatedTeeth.com. Great. What's wisdom this? tooth paresthe paresthesia. Never heard of this. Well, you didn't get a wisdom tooth out, though, right? I didn't, but he was right, right, really close to where it is. Oh, look oh at it's that. paresthesia is a complication of tooth removal. 
Interesting. Root nerve proximity. Uh, I don't see any animated teeth on this page. I'm yeah. really disappointed. I was really gonna. I was really hoping I'd see like a couple of them walking around, saying, "Let's all go to the lobby." Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, what I see is 1999 called, and they want their web design back. That's <laughs> exactly. Jeez, Louise, we can't wait till we can move this over to GeoCities. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So if you cut in, they're showing an image here. It is actually animated. There's a GIF down lower, but they show oh. the nerve. It's a slow GIF, so if you blink, you'll miss it. And it shows if the if the nerve crosses the root there and you pull that thing out and you damage the nerve, you could screw up your face. But but he didn't take a tooth out. He just filled one. No, yeah. he just filled one. And it was exactly. on the bottom or top? Uh, on the top. Okay. Uh, it was a number 15 on the top. It's not too bad. Where's that? Way back? It's way back, isn't it? Yeah, second to second to last. Okay. It is the penultimate tooth on the <laughs> in the top row. Nice. That's where my gold tooth is. Love getting to use penultimate. Yeah. Um, Gekitsu, Gekitsu says uh, Coverville. Did you contact the dentist to let him know what's going on? Nope. That that is happening today. I was deciding to give it um, a full twenty four hours before I before I contacted him and rather than do it yesterday afternoon I said I'll do it today they're closed tomorrow they always take they like every every uh Friday off like really they every weekend is a three-day weekend for them yeah oh geez that's nice I wonder how yeah. that works out for people which is a bummer because Friday would normally be a pretty good day for me to get dentist stuff done I don't have a TMS in the morning I can go do that first thing but mm -hmm. um you just have that no. in your way in you know yeah exactly I mean, he's not going to do it. I doubt they're going to do anything. They'll just say, mm -hmm. oh, that's no good. Well, here's what you should do at home. Yeah. But they're not going to keep you from uh, in there. Uh, Brian, you know, that uh, that, that could happen. Uh, that, that could happen. You know, it'll probably go away after a little <laughs> while. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, how's your wife? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those that can happen, doctors. Ugh. It is one of those, yeah. I hate that answer. Tina, Tina who's listening right now and is in the chat room, can... Uh, can deny or confirm that that is probably what he's going to say and how he's going to say it. Is that his voice? Because it did feel like somebody yeah. else talking there for a second. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. Oh, J.K. Grammar. That was nowhere near my Ken Kratz. Are you no, kidding me? Not even close to Ken Kratz. Yeah. J.K. Grammar, well, you're, go back to bed. Uh, well, the problem here uh, could be that we <laughs> accidentally struck and um, severed the nerve behind tooth number 15. If you look at exhibit B. <laughs> it's <pretty> <laughs> I don't ever want him in my mouth, ever. <laughs> no, you don't know where those fingers have been. No, I don't. That guy, geez louise. You know what I forgot to recommend yesterday? I was going to do a double recommend and I totally forgot. It's a documentary. You reminded me of it. Another Netflix documentary that freaked me the F out. Man, just I'll, I'll save it for next time, but I'm just going to tell the chat room, go watch uh, Kidnapped in Broad Daylight, I think is what it is. Mm. Kidnapped, in, kidnapped in Broad Daylight? I think that's it. It's this story about this kidnapping and this horrendous thing in Idaho, Pocatello, Idaho, back in the 70s. It is unbelievable. Nobody dies in it, but man, it is just... Oh, I came away from that going, I need a freaking hot shower with a pressure washer. <laughs> and I don't mean it was like wow. gratuitous. I just mean I can't believe it happened. I couldn't believe that happened and the way it happened and... The periphery damage it caused is insane. You have to, you have huh. to see it. All right. Sam uh, Jean says, uh, don't watch it. Oh, my God, it's awful. Okay, watch it because... Blah. Yeah. No, you should watch it. I mean, it's it's not it's not exploitative. It's not like a bad... It's not like a bad document. It's a great documentary. It's really well made. It's just... What happens to these people? I just couldn't believe it. I don't know how it happened. Like, I still look back and go, wait, what did you... Why did you do that? How come you let that happen? Like, it's a complicated, ugly, weird deal. Anyway, uh, hey, I stand corrected. I was wrong. So a bunch okay. of people pointed this out. Plus, I did a little check on my own. Uh, Ash Carter yesterday. She's 21. I said, hey, did you do you remember having a snow day? Because yesterday was snow day for seven districts in the state. Just wow. Never. It's unprecedented because we just don't do that. We make our way through the snow. That's what we do. And uh, the answer uh, from her was, I never had a snow day, Dad. I said, oh, well, it must happen on weekends or something. She says, I don't know, but I never had a day off. And they asked the older daughters, you ever have one? Nope, never had one. Nick never had one. I'm like, this can't be. Taylor's, Taylor's 24. There's no way in 24 years of kids they didn't have a single snow day in the Salt Lake Valley. It's just not possible. So I did some looking. Sure enough, wow. not a district has shut down since 
24 years, literally 24 years ago. So the year Taylor was born, 1994, uh, that's the last time there was a, a snow day. A snow day. And she was Tristan a baby had, then, so it didn't matter, you know? Tristan had a bunch. It seemed like he had at least one every year he was in high school and junior high because they would always extend the end of their school year by that many days mm. they wouldn't it wouldn't be like all right that's just a day that we kind of throw out it's lost to the ether yeah. no it'd be basically you got to make this up so it kind of it kind of like dulled the joy of snow day it's like well all we're doing is cutting into our summer i think i'd much rather go to school mm. than have one more day that that it's beautiful out that we can't uh be free well what's hilarious is the kids act like this is some kind of a front like they have been screwed out of, <laughs> up, out of some opportunity it, it's like i never go to snow day, the, dad me it's always determined by the superintendent right isn't the superintendent the one who says yeah snow day today the super or nintendo is it, um, yeah the well, super nintendo there's a it's per district i think they make the decision um okay. so I did so in my search I never found even a single district so those that are on higher elevations I thought oh well those guys down in Cedar City they're way gonna have more snow so I'll bet they canceled nope um, just 24 years of like clean slate no snow days um, there may have been some early days and stuff they don't count I don't know like that wasn't uh -huh. clear with what I was digging up and asking around about but 24 freaking years that's insane especially wow, given that, that in 24 insane. years we have seen a lot of crazy winters like I don't know how we got away with it maybe Maybe they did happen on weekends more. Maybe we had bad snow on a Sunday, and who cares? Because by Monday, it's all, you know, calmed down and shoveled. So it, it surprised me. Um, oh, wait, chat room says something about Davis. Davis County School District never had a snow day while I was going, and they didn't. Oh, and Davis still was open yesterday? Interesting. I don't know if wow. they get as much snow in Davis County, though. But Yeah, today was a big snow day. Uh, oh, yeah. Did you guys get it? We sent it your way. We did. Whee! We did. And it, it was like uh, three below. I mean, it's, yeah, there's really not that much snow on the ground maybe three four inches outside i'm looking at my i'm looking at accuradar weather uh cover cam right now yeah and uh it's only about three or four inches on the ground it's easily i think it's just the roads were a little bit slippery because we'd had some warm weather right up until the snow and so it had a nice little layer of ice underneath all that snow some places we had it's up like, to three feet out in front of my yard it's a foot and a half wow i think that's what oh happened oh my god yeah we didn't have anything like that we got they got left here and then just went over with its little weenie afterthought and pooped yeah, on you. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. Lame. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we took one for the for the inner, for the inner mountain team, for the Rocky Mountain team, and uh, we're happy to do it. Uh, but it does remind oh. me how bad people are on the roads. They're just terrible. People go out oh. and, and slam their brakes in a truck that is not going to stop, and these cars are just flying into intersections. Yesterday, was, Kim was trying to... Uh, oh, get the baby back home and did and then came back the other way and big semis just going oh, in the God. middle of things and all that. And then uh, all I could think about yesterday was, man, I'm glad I don't have a commute anymore. I don't want to do that. Oh, I don't want to. Can you imagine, yeah. dude, fighting that at nine o'clock in the morning with three feet of no, snow in some no. places, foot and a half in others? I am so, I, I can never go back to that, Scott. I don't think I could ever go back to a Oof. nine to five office job where I have to drive there every day and. Yeah. To put on pants god who wants to who wants to put on pants i don't i don't well i guess i'm wearing them now but normally i'm, kidding. I'm wearing them too normally i'm raw <laughs> dogging it but i don't have to that's the whole point is i am but i don't have to wear them does, does raw dogging it mean something else i've always i always say that and someone says yes yes oh, oh it does raw dogging it is um not using a prophylactic oh really <laughs> yes as oh in, let me use it in a sentence uh, our commander in chief totally raw dogged that porn star. <laughs> hey, guy who gets mad when I bring up Trump, that was Brian, not me. I'm just that putting was it me. out there. I'll take it. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, okay, I should stop using that because the way I've always used it is I'm is if you're naked, or someone will say, uh, "Wait, were you running around the house naked?" And you go, "Yeah, I was totally raw dogging it." I thought that's what that meant. <laughs> No, yeah, that's not at all. I didn't know. Not that. at all what it means. It's not even like commando. It's like it's a whole different thing. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll say free ball in it if they're in the just you know not wearing their undies. Right. It's like a, it's basically like you're describing an uncooked frankfurter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a raw dog. Oh, okay. I got to honestly. I'm gonna have to train myself. I say this all the time to people who I shouldn't say this to. 
Like I'd say to my mother-in-law, yeah. what'd you do all weekend? Oh, we stayed in. Ah, you guys raw dogging it all weekend? Like in my head, I'm saying, like, are, you, <laughs> are you running around naked? And, yeah. and in her mind, right. well, maybe she'd we never know. raw dog it all weekend. Either, nice. either way, she wouldn't know, I guess. <laughs> I love it. Uh, tell me about your teapot or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <is>. well, <laughs> Tempest in the teapot. Yeah. So I kick-started this, and I just had to finally show it on screen here. But um, this is oh. my... Your miniature little, Tempest little machine. Tempest machine, dude. And well, it's booting up. So it's hold booting, on. Yeah. Hold on a second. Can you tell me the finish on camera looks great? Like it looks like it's well made. It and- it looks and and has the solidness uh, and feel of a of a miniaturized full size Tempest like machine. A shrunk down arcade machine. That's awesome. exactly. And it sounds like basically it plays and sounds just like the real thing. So if I were, oh, it's still booting. Stab your bootin'. What's in Stab there, do you know? Stab your bootin'. Do you know what the little chippy huh? is in it or what's running it or oh. anything? <laughs> I've been playing it too much and not charging it because uh, now it's dead. <laughs> great. Great. Just like the problem we had in the 80s in the arcade. Who didn't charge the Tempest machine, they'd say, yeah, in 1985. Yeah, I gotta go play uh, Tron. Yeah, had to play Tron. Oh, well. I like Discs of Tron. That was a cool game. But uh, it, it's, uh, it comes with two different knobs you can put on there. One of them is... Um, uh, like more accurate to the scale, the size. The other one is a much fatter knob that you can use if you're like genuinely playing the game. A lot more comfortable to play it. And then um, it comes with quarters that you can put uh, on the display on the glass to line up for when it's your turn. Really? Yes. Oh Come my little gosh. miniature. That's amazing. How do you not lose those? How do those not just fall on the floor and never get seen again? Because yeah, I'd lose yeah, them. Yeah, they, they will because they are, they are minuscule. Let's see these things. I haven't even. I have not even taken them out of the plastic oh, bag in which oh, they. Oh, look at them! <laughs> the little tiny little, quarters. Little tiny quarters. Oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, I wish I would have backed it. I didn't back it. Do they still sell them? They probably do. They are. Yeah, but they're just full price now. Um, I think. Right now they have the centipede, which is normally 170. They have it down to 120. Really tempted to get the centipede one. But the other, the one that they're back, they're kickstarting right now is the freaking uh, Street Fighter, Street Fighter Two, I think. It'd have to be two, right? Yeah. Uh, And it's NewWaveToys.com, by the way. Um, It, it, I I couldn't, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't do it It, because you know that thing's got to have two player, right? Well, maybe. Oh, I guess it doesn't. No, I guess it doesn't. It's just a joystick, six buttons. six regular buttons, and then another button for start. I yeah, guess. three. You got three punch, three kick, start, mm-hmm. and a joystick. It looks like. Yeah. Do they have a? They don't do a joust version of this, do they? No, but um, I'd buy that. I know heartbeat. that they are. They are working on a whole mess of games like this, and I think it's um <gasps> they're doing all the Atari ones because they have a license for them, but. Uh, the oh, coin, the me? sorry, the 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 insert coin keychain. Did you see that? Oh yeah, yeah. It's one of those. Oh, you should totally get one of those. It's kind of like a little, you know, tribute to your dad. Yeah, and look at it blinking. It's got light yeah. in it. And oh my gosh, <laughs> dude, I'm getting one of those. <laughs> I want all of this. Oh my gosh, he's got he's got a Han Solo action figure playing the Tempest machine. Yes, the centipede. Yeah, machine. the. Uh, yeah, it's too the the 3D printed me that I have is too short to play this Tempest. It, it basically uh, I look like a the 3D printed painted me is too mm. uh, too, too short. This too is more cool. like um, <laughs> actually it's about Spice Girls level, but I'm not going to take them out of the box to play. These are only 14.99 for this keychain. The keychains are only 14.99. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna have to do it. I can't believe I'm doing this. this yeah, well, you're spending 15 bucks. That's nothing. It seems like a cool thing to do. I'm doing yeah. it. It's happening. Help, help, it's happening. I'm doing it right now in the air. What is wrong with me? Well, I'm going to do it later because there's a bunch of stuff to fill out. Do I, do I, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I can't do the centipede one. But right now it's... I don't even carry keys. I'm going to put that thing on the wall. It's going to hang there. I don't like Why having don't keys in my keys? pocket. I don't like keeping them in my oh. pocket. I just keep them in my bag and then use them when I need them. Plus, the the when I take Kim's car, which is mostly what we drive these days, it's a wireless fob thing. So I'm not even putting a key in a hole. I just carry it in a bag or something. Oh, that's uh, nice. I like that. Man, now I'm all tempty. Look at that stuff on this site. This is a 
bastard it's thing. Such uh, they they've really they you know they are basically satisfying the dream of being able to have uh, a shelf somewhere that is a miniature arcade. You know what they got to do is they got to come out with a miniature coin machine. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Oh, they do Apple and, Pay, Google Pay. They don't do uh, PayPal. PayPal, those buttholes. It's easier hmm. for me. That's fine. Whatever, I'll figure it out. Uh, well, that's a fun show for everyone to listen to while when we buy a bunch of video game stuff. That's great. People yeah. love it. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, New Wave Toys owes us some uh, some compensation if anybody goes out there and picks up stuff because of us. This is all true. Hey, a reminder, uh, latter half of the show after the break song today, we're doing this. Call now. Which means you guys get to call in, you get to ask questions, you get to say things, you get to do whatever you want. And I want you to prepare now by writing this phone number down, 801 471 801-471-0462. And we will uh, happily uh, take your calls a little bit later in the show. But for now, this. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. It's the news brought to you by Skim, where tonight we see what Kim thinks of a used toothpick in the pot. Frogpants.com slash skim for details. Yeah, you can get the podcast or you can watch live. But today I... We'll just see. She doesn't know about it yet. She didn't listen to the show. No one told her. So I'm going to just let her know. Hey, that last what, batch what, of jambalaya what, had a big old toothpick in it, and it was one that I had in my ear. How do you feel about it? Let's see what she says. <laughs> what time are you doing this? Uh, today at 4... Oh, sorry. When do we do this? 5. 5 to 6. 5 to 6. Okay. Yeah, so 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, Frogpants.tv. Awesome. Check it out. All right. Hey, look at this. We skipped a story yesterday. Felt bad about it because it's super dumb and perfect for what we do. A USB stick was found frozen in seal poo. Seal poo. Seal poo. You know, <laughs> not him, not seals poo. Not oh, his oh, poo, okay. no. <laughs> Someone's digging through famed 90s singer Seal's dump. No. I compare you to a stick from a turd on the floor. <laughs> Uh, and there's no way this there's no way this USB memory stick doesn't have a virus. I know that's what I'm saying. Get it? USB yeah, stick virus. found in a frozen seal poo. Scientists in New Zealand said that they found a USB memory stick containing holiday photos inside a frozen slab of seal poop. The scat, valuable for studying the health of leopard seals, has been stored in a freezer for a year before it was thought out for analysis. Concealed deep inside the scat was a USB stick, says the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research. <laughs> The stick was in good condition, considering where it had come from. Well, I mean, okay, that's fine. And the researchers we, let it dry out a few weeks. Hmm. Do they think that uh, a leopard seal ate the USB stick and passed it, or do they think some dude just accidentally dropped it and it it fell into some fresh poo and and? Uh, I think. I mean, both, I guess it wouldn't it wouldn't just sink into poo, right? No, no. I'll bet the thing. I'll bet it got eaten and then passed. Uh, I, I could yeah. be wrong, but what's what's cool about USB sticks and, and solid state data in general mm -hmm. is that you just let it dry out for a few weeks and it works yeah. still. Yeah, like totally. I do this all the time with like um, what was it I dropped in the water? Oh no, we used to I used to wash my keyboards. Uh, this mm -hmm. is years ago, but I used to wash my keyboards in PC keyboards in the dishwasher, mm -hmm. and because someone said you could do that and I wanted to test to see if it was true. I can't believe you can do that. Oh, That's you can crazy. You totally do that. Um, and then you pull them out. You, you don't want to use the um, uh, the soap stuff though. That'll just grime it up. But right. use right. just water, hot, you know, a hot run through the, the, the dishwasher and then you let it air dry and you let it sit there for a day and then mm -hmm. they all worked and they were clean as hell. That was awesome. So I don't think you couldn't do that with like a, one of these Apple. I don't, know. I don't think you could do it with these Apple. I deals. mean, I just got this one, and I don't think I would put this. Yeah, sweet. Oh, that's right. You got the 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 space gray, the new magic one. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, a lot. I like that one. I bought it because it's got a number pad. Got it for Christmas. I really like mm -hmm. it. <laughs> I I grabbed it and said, Kim, this is for me for Christmas. Is what I said. <laughs> um, I need to try that. By the way, uh, I got this. I, I got this Christmas week. Uh huh. Still on my first charge. Still at. 69 percent like wow crazy crazy battery life on this thing That's but awesome. anyway Jeez. i think there's a lot more stuff in here that i would worry about so i wouldn't do this yeah. but like just yeah. a regular old and i don't even sure like a modern pc keyboard maybe is a bad idea too but these were like you know honeywell dell basic yeah, yeah nothing crazy about yeah. them and they clean the hell out of those things and i remember thinking 
Wow, that's awesome. And then everyone always said, no, look, if you drop your phone in the toilet before they were kind of waterproof, or you mm-hmm. drop your, I don't know, your SD card in, some, in a drink, just get it out of there, put it in some rice if you want to hurry the process up. But one way or the other, just dry the thing out, and it'll, it'll work. Like, straight up, should still work. Yeah. Because it's, I don't know, I love that. I love that. It's a cool technology, man. Name it something is. else you can it drop totally in the is. toilet and make work. I can't think of anything. Yeah. Oh, uh, a turd. A turd. <laughs> turd still works after you <laughs> drop it in the toilet. Still fully functional still turd. turd. Still does everything a, a dry turd can do. <laughs> this guy uh, listened to the show, sent me an email, said, um, every time you guys bring up a story that has anything to do with poop, he gags. Mm-hmm. And I think really? he has a specific, like, yeah, like a thing going. So he's probably dying right now. I'm thinking about you, bud. <laughs> does seal poo still trigger, or does it have to be human poo? That's a good question. I don't know. That's a really good question. But anyway, this contained photos of sea lions at Porpoise Bay in New Zealand, South Island, and a video oh, of, nice. an, of a mother sea lion and her baby frolicking in shallow waters. Uh, the only clue uh, to what may have taken or may, what might have taken them uh, is the nose of a blue kayak. Uh, adding the uh, let's see, adding that the return of the USB stick comes with a price. The leopard seal researchers would like some more leopard scat uh, to work with. Please, they say. They've asked for please, please more leopard uh, leopard seal please. poo. <laughs> please, please, may we have some? Please more leopard scat. I'm really glad it wasn't full of porn or something weird. You know. Oh yeah. Oh jeez. Yeah. We got enough of those stories lately. All right, here's a story for you. Yep. Twenty-seven year old. Those are millennials, right? Mm-hmm. I think. I think that's what they're. They're technically millennials. Anyway, I think so. I think that's within the the range that we came up with. Yeah, uh, Carter says she's in that category by only a couple of years. So uh-huh. she's twenty one. Okay. She was born in ninety seven. So that if she's a millennial, then I think it breaks right around Nick's time at two thousand. And now he's whatever they're calling them. <laughs> anyway, twenty seven year old wants to sue parents after he didn't consent to being born in the first place. Good luck with this one. Yeah. We've all had the odd tantrum where we scream at our parents and wish we were never born. I never did. I never did that. I wish I'd never been born. You never threw you never loved that one at your parents? Nope, just a frozen loaf of bread, and that was it. I don't (laughs) think that's the only thing you've ever loved at your parents. I don't think I've ever said that either. I wish I was never born. I don't (laughs) even think uh Tristan never said that to Tina and I. I think that was uh My kids never either. They just why would you? Of course you want to be born. You're here, you're you're good, you got survival instincts. We've seen enough. We've seen enough '80s movies to know that you know <laughs> there there might be some uh, magic in the air from touching a uh, Zoldar machine or a, a crystal skull or mm-hmm. something that might make it come true. It's all true. Uh, it says this: one man is taking a step further in this idea by suing his mother and father for unwanted birth. Uh, you probably never heard of it. There's a belief known as anti-nationalism or natalism, natalism, anti-natalism. Yeah, probably natalism. Yeah, yeah, that seems like. Seems right. The word nationalism just came out. I couldn't help it. <laughs> uh, it's basically the idea that you have the right to decide whether or not you're born. This may be a tricky thing when swimming around in the womb. According to the print, uh, or the pint, no, the print, which is a Mumbai-based uh, uh, Raphael Samuel. What's this? Oh, this is the, the guy. Mumbai print. So the print is a, pa- is a, it's a newspaper. newspaper. Yeah. Anyway, he's talking to his parents in court or, uh, to sue for maintenance because he did not ask to be born. Uh, quote, I want to tell the Indian kids that, that they don't owe their parents anything. I love my parents, and we have a great relationship, but they had me for their joy and their pleasure. How do you love your parents and have a great relationship if you're suing them for being born? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That seems odd. That's horse patootie. <laughs> we have a great... We, we get along so well that I'm suing the pants off of them for... <laughs> for uh, uh, for not... not uh, for not raw, for for raw dogging it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm suing them for raw dogging. <laughs> I hate to tell him this. He says, you know, you don't owe your parents anything. They don't owe you anything either, buddy. Right. Right. He continued, Bucko. "My life has been amazing, but I don't see why I should put another life through the rigmarole of school and finding a career, especially when they didn't ask to exist." Well, then don't have kids yourself. Then. Mm-hmm. This, is, this, is, this is easy. I don't understand this at all. This is crazy. If this makes it to a full magistrate court or whatever it sounds like it's in England somewhere if it makes it there y'all are wasting your freaking time go do something else that's a done throw this one out it's stupid yeah yeah exactly yeah does he want to get taken out then do, do, does, do we need your permission to take you the other direction then buddy if you don't want to be here how about that 
we brought you into this world. We can take you out. We can so take you out. Yeah. Yes, that's the classic uh, Cosby line. Am I thinking? <laughs> Am I remembering it right? If I brought you into this world, I can take you. Leo, out. I brought you into this world. I can take you out. I think it might be him. He said, "I brought myself into this prison, and I can't get out." He says, "No." <laughs> uh, let's move on here. Man's request for a vanity plate was denied in Canada because his last name could cause offense. Oh, you Canadians. You think we're too politically correct here in the States? I got some bad news for you. These Canadians, man. Yeah. Canadian man what says that his. Uh, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> afraid to hear what it says. Well, let's. I'll read on. A Canadian man says that his request for a personalized license plate has been rejected on the grounds that it contains, quote, an unacceptable slogan. CBC reports that Dave Assman. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Is this Kramer's? Isn't this Kramer's? Uh, I know it Kramer's is. It is Kramer's plate? license plate. In fact, this is totally a Kramer reference. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a whole thing yeah. about Kramer and his license plate, the proctologist, doctor, Assman. Yes, right. All that. Hey, yes, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that one. That one's so good. That is a great episode. Yeah. Um, he says he pronounces the last name Osman, so it's not supposed to be ass man, but it's spelled like ass man. Anyway, uh, he's been prohibited from putting his last name on his license plate, and he is determined to fight the ban. Uh, it's my last name. I've always had it. The Saskatchewan resident told the CBC, I'm not ashamed of it. There's nothing bad about it, eh? He didn't say eh. <laughs> oh, come on, yeah. you hoser. I threw that in there. He's eating back bacon and wearing a toque. Anyway, <laughs> says for ass man, or Osman, uh, his name carries a proud legacy. His great-grandfather, an ass man himself, would help other farmers during hard times. Ah, good old ass man. Ah, the, far uh, the farm's falling apart. What do we do? Call, Call ass, ass man. man. <laughs> this looks like a job for <laughs> ass man. <laughs> Someone uh, put up the ass signal. No I'm kidding. I don't want to see what that is. No. Uh, farmers would come in the early 30s. They'd borrow money from him, uh, says Ass Man. Instead of him foreclosing on their land, he would just either forgive it or let them pay when they could. But according to government officials, a license plate featuring the name could offend others. Even if a word is someone's name and pronounced differently than the offensive version, this is not something that would uh, be apparent to other motorists who will see the plate, says SGI spokesman Tyler McMurphy. Now, I would say... Tyler I, McMurphy. I kind, <laughs> I kind of get it if you, th it, if the authorities have some rules in place that are about distraction on the road. Yeah, right. You could make, I guess, you could make the argument that if I'm looking at some going, dude, that guy's thing says ass man, and I wasn't paying attention. Well, and uh, if this guy's name is was Smith, do you think he'd care about putting it on his license plate? The reason he's putting it on his license plate is because he knows it's controversial. Right. Well, I think so, too, right? Why else would you yeah. do it? You don't need people yeah, to know not... your last names on your car. Right, exactly. I never understood like... these plates. I get... Maybe I'm... Maybe... You know what? It's because we're on the internet, and we have always had pseudonyms for who we are. It's always some... Yeah. You're Coverville and lots of things. I was, Peep, <laughs> I was Peeps Darius for years. I was Buddy Pickle for a bunch of mother years. <laughs> Buddy Pickle? Now I'm Frog Pants and Gurp everywhere. Like, you're always a fake name on the internet, so it never appealed to me to go, and I'm going to do that in real life and go get a license plate that says Gurp on it. I mean, why would I? I mean, it kind of sounds cool now that I say it out loud, but I don't think I would. I so, know. Scott, yeah. and you've even seen this. You've seen the, the cover mobile, the Kia Soul. Yeah, what do you got it's on got a license plate. license plate is Cover Me. Come on now. All right, fine. <laughs> Why would I ever do that? I mean, I, well, that's fine. What I'm saying is I would Why never would put... You do, I would think you should do frog pants, like do F-R-G-P-N-T-S. I, I can do that. I think that would be so awesome. I could do that, yeah. but I'm, what I'm saying is I don't want to put Johnson on there. Well, no. And you don't want to put <laughs> Ibit on yours, right? No, I totally don't. Yeah, there's no way. So that's why I but say Ass Man was, here. Exactly. If my name was Ass Man, I'd be like, oh, I'm totally putting Ass Man on my license plate. Mm. Frog pants. I'm totally putting the final down in <laughs> my license plate. <laughs> F-R-G-P-N-T-S. I'm, I'm curious, by the way, uh, from yesterday's episode where I was announcing the uh, the song, the, yeah. the, the, the cover to end the show. Yeah. Did you bleep that out? No, I left it. What'd you, what'd you say? <laughs> Did I miss it? What'd you say? What? What'd you say? I missed it. You didn't miss it because you went, oh! Oh, that! No, 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 I kept that in. Because you... Oh, uh, sorry, I was thinking of the wrong thing. Yeah, no, the, the C word uh, that you dropped by accident. Uh, yes. That was... It, was in a, it wasn't the completed with the T. So you, you, you didn't get all oh, really? the way down. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel like I did. I feel like I said it. You said <laughs> C-U-N. Well, at least in my head. You know what? We're going to go... Let's go to the tape. 
We're not going to play it again, are we? Really? Yeah, I'm going to check it. We're going to check it and see. <laughs> and if it's the full thing, I'll bleep today's. But uh, okay. uh, what was yesterday's episode number? Uh, Dead uh, Polymers, I think, actually. Wow, that was really quick that he pulled up a link. Oh, there's already a clip? Yeah. No. Oh, oh there right. was a click within seconds, Scott. Okay, Come on now. Let's find this clip here. Let's play this. All right. Where's volume? Volume's up. All right, here we go. Yeah, you're going to get a cover of Europe's The Final Cun... cun <laughs> See, I think he said cun. <laughs> I think I completed yeah, it. you're going to get a cover I... of Europe's The Final Cun... cun Woo! Just like... Just like older episodes of The Instance, there was clearly a T. See, the chat room is saying no T. People people agree with me. No, no, no. Yeah, Sam some... Jane is saying there was a T. Uh, Others are saying uh, no. Jedi says, nope, full T. Oh. Joe T. Cross says there was a T. Oh, you T's are hearing a full T then. I'm not hearing the full T. It's a soft T. <laughs> <laughs> it's a soft T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'll go back and fix that <laughs> I don't later. even think we need to put this to a, no. a straw poll. It was clearly a T. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please. I implore you. I implore Was there a T? <laughs> I implore you. All right. Uh, final note: uh, a trend yes. is sweeping the fashion industry that nobody asked for. Mm -hmm. Fake camel toe underwear. Excellent. Yeah, this is awesome. Okay, I'm not going to show these photos because I find them distasteful. Uh, <laughs> I find them. This is the final. <laughs> The, oh yeah! Oh my God! No I know way. they're horrible. Like they're not. It's not cool. In fact, you yeah. know what? I'll put one of these up because let's see, view image and new tab. All right, we're gonna look at one of these because it's just the underwear by itself. But this okay. is what people are talking about, chat. This thing right here. People are buying these so that you got this <laughs> big lumpy freaking camel toe right up front. Well, like why? I gotta put a. I gotta put a uh, another photo in here. And it's the one where they show the four different uh, colors that you can get. Yeah. Pale Asian, which is default, <laughs> tan or dark. Oh, yeah, here it is. All right, I'll but show my that favorite my favorite part of that is the fact that they misspell the word product. <laughs> I call it prod cut. Prod cut. Oh, yeah, look at that. Prod cut. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Prod cut color option. Pale, Asian, default. They, the Asian they default. They don't just add the camel toe. But they make it look like your um, your your fupa is huge. Yeah. Your fat upper pelvic region, your fupa. Yeah, your fupa. By the way, uh, the Asian default. I don't think that lady's yeah. Asian. I think that's just a oh, yeah. just a lady. I, I get yeah, dark. You got well. it. Well done on dark. Good job on tan. I understand that pale. Right. I get it. Right. Asian. Yes. She's not Asian. That is that is yeah. That is not an a hashtag. Not an Asian. No. <laughs> <laughs> so nice job on your prod cut. They need to talk to freaking Tim Cook and spell and say that better. Prod cut. Prod cut. <laughs> Prod cut. Nice catch. Prod cut. Anyway, uh, this is a the latest in the WTF fashion trends. Fake camel toe underwear. Yes, you read that right. Fake camel toe underwear. Like we said, uh, while we're certainly not, uh, this article says, we certainly don't understand the appeal. Tons of women are flocking to purchase this underwear that makes their hoo-ha visible through their clothes to everyone else. Uh, fake camel toe underwear. Must let's see. I'm, just, I'm not reading that part. Uh, confusing. Okay, this is our this article is very uh, like not newsy. It's more like a guy going, "Can you believe it? Oh my gosh!" <laughs> um, anyway, if uh, you don't know what a camel toe is and you're listening to the audio version of the show, don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't go look it up. Yeah. But if you know what we're talking about, I guess now you can go. See, I always thought that was a goof. If you were <clears throat> if you were showing uh then let's be fair, let's do the man version. Knuck, uh, moose knuckle. If you got moose knuckle, okay, yeah. you've heard that right before, Brian? New moose knuckle? I've totally heard of moose knuckle. All right. And if they made I mean basically moose knuckle you can simulate moose knuckle underwear by just putting anything you want. Uh oh yeah, just pants. jam a sock in there at the store, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Uh but if you got moose knuckle or you got the the uh you got a bad case of camel toe. Both of those things are considered f faux pas. They're not. They're not supposed to be on purpose. It's supposed to be. Oops! I didn't know it looked like that. Crap! I won't go to the gym unless I get some other, better whatevers. Like you don't want camel toe, yet somehow these people do. Yeah, I can't yeah. explain it. 
So I don't know if people are joking, uh, and and if you're not joking, I, I apologize for for wondering if you're joking. But they're talking about that, it, um, like uh, Kazumi 6 says, this is more for crossdressers. Please don't shame L U L. So I'm, that's why I'm thinking, all right, it's a joke, because I'm thinking it's not. It's like the um, uh, the pants that include extra butt, mm. like a, a, an extra padding for your, or extra padded butt to make it look like you're like you've got Nicki Minaj butt going on. Okay, so if you are, let's say you're uh, trans, but in the junk department, you still got the man bits. And yeah. So like, does that does that? Uh, so you want to okay. look more like a lady? So you wear you wear the so camel this, toe. You, you put your business inside this thing to make it a smoother uh, camel toe situation this, and not have a... Right, not have a m- moose knuckle. A bulge. And basically. according to this site, they don't appear to know that. And I didn't even think about it until you guys said it in the chat. Yeah. It's not shaming. Like, get what you want to do. I don't care. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But why wouldn't you want something that just... Just has a flat... Flat you know, out. Not, yeah. Exactly. This is a real question. I'm not... This is not a sarcastic one. Mm-hmm. It's not... No one thinks that that... The camel toe is is super attractive. I don't think someone does, but it's not me. So I mean, if so, yeah. why wouldn't you want to just get like a flat, like a I don't get know, the equivalent of a sports bra, basically, to just kind of mash things down? I, why wouldn't you do that? That's what I would do. So somebody out <laughs> Ken, there, Ken doll, Ken doll yourself, basically. So somebody out there is in the middle of doing that. You you write in and let me know. I'd, I'd be curious. We we have a fair number of trans listeners. I'd like to know what the <laughs> what's your deal. And then how do you go the other direction, like? Uh, if you're going uh, the other the other way, are you buying like a, a, a wienery looking thing? You know that looks like you're packing on a bunch of heat in there. Like I want to know. Right. All right. No, well. no, and that's what I and that's what I mean. Uh, uh, Tally Zorel says because we do want to flatten. I'm saying that's what I mean. You know, having it flat as opposed to having the camel toe. Um, by the way, Tina and I were watching. We've got a, a, a local terrestrial channel here that does nothing but old '70s TV shows. Mm. And they show oh, that like great. game shows and Love Boat and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They were showing Wonder Woman, and I glance over and, and uh, Linda Carter had just done her her fun little spinny thing and turned into uh, Wonder Woman. Uh-huh. And I had to freeze frame it and call Tina in the room. I said, "Oh my God, Wonder Woman's got camel toe!" <laughs> Oh wow! It was like, it was like some deep Linda Carter camel toe going on. Right. Well, okay. Let me. Let me. Sorry, I'm looking down. To see if there's anything else. Fake camel toe underwear. All jokes aside, is it a bit of benefits? Fake camel toe. Is it surprisingly, men have taken advantage of the product as an opportunity to blast women as. What? This doesn't have this. They they have all these theories why this is a thing, and the, but none of them are the ones that the chat room brought up. Hey, well done, LostMisfits.com, whatever the hell you are, whatever the kind of website that is. They're terrible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to do call now, 801-471-0462. You can call in, and if you got a comment about the camel toe underwear, we'd love to hear it. 801-471-0462. Before all that, though, a song, Brian has it. He'll now tell us what it is. Yes. A uh, brand new album by the band Cycloner, S-Y-C-L-O-N-E-R. The album is called Lost and Found. Um, these guys remind me a lot of uh, David Byrne in vocals and, and music style. So a little bit of Talking Heads action going on here. Uh, the song, the single from the album, or the first single we're going to be playing uh, from Lost and Found, is Metaphor. Here is Cycloner. Trainee oh tea taste of Patrick Stenson was about to discover that when you start to learn at Ridgeways, you start right at the bottom. The computer is ready for use. The Morning Stream. Can you dig it? All right, we're back, everybody. Let us now have some fun on the show yeah yeah i like that fun you like that fun Fun, yeah. yeah yeah fun is good fun is great we have the whole world on a plate we're gonna play this game call now it's where you guys call in and uh boy i wish i had that up and ready i don't but i'm about to so if you're calling and you're like why isn't he answering it's because i don't have this up here yet but i'm getting there hold on a second okay great that's not exactly what i wanted well done okay great close that boy google hangouts you're just killing it today what the hell happened? All right, hold on. <laughs> Did you notice the uh, Google Doc 
font change. Yeah, also the like tabs, it. tabs down at the bottom yeah, are green. Yeah, tabs, and, all that stuff. I kind of like it. It's yeah, a nice, uh, it's a nice update. Yeah. I feel like they were, I feel like it matches better some of their other stuff. They just hadn't updated it yet. But. Yeah, I mean, it matches the, um, the sans serif version of their logo and mm -hmm. the alphabet logo, whatever that font is, kind of like a, somewhere between avant-garde and, um, Gotham or something, yeah. not Gotham. And they used to be much more. They're they're definitely in keeping Futura, with that kind somewhere of, between Avant Garden Futura. They're much more flat design, mm -hmm. like the, all their other stuff. So I think it's I yes. think it's a good look. It's not bad. Yeah. All right, we'll take a call. Eight zero one four seven one zero four six two. That's eight zero one four seven one zero four six two. The chat room pointed out that some people are into the whole camel toe thing as a thing they like. Uh, they find it attractive. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't. And no shame. I guess that's cool. No. Whatever. If you're into it, do it. Go for it. Whatever. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I just find it embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I'll say this. I don't find it unattractive. I mean, I wouldn't... Um... Well, it's not like you're going to go, Ooh, gosh, get away from me. You've got the camel toe. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Right? I like... would say, that looks uncomfortable. Do you need to go uh, <laughs> excuse yourself to the restroom and fish that out of there? <laughs> Uh, oh, hi, sorry. So we got a caller on the line. Hi, who's this? <laughs> I'm sorry. That conversation was kind of yeah. awkward. Aren't you, aren't you happy? Aren't you happy you got to call in and hang out with us while we had such an awkward conversation? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's say um, I prefer the camel toe over the moose knuckle. Oh, yeah. Me too. Well, yeah. yeah. Sure. I don't want no moose knuckle. Nobody wants that. In fact, if you if I, I went to a cookie place. And they had something in the on the menu like mm. baked goods. One of them's called a moose knuckle. <laughs> ben and Jerry's moose knuckle flavor. <laughs> it was like a big, it was like a big uh, brownie looking clawed looking sure. thing in this place in this sure. bakery. And I just was like, I'm not eating no moose knuckle, dude. Freaking forget it. What if they What if they had one called camel toe? That was like a. Um, I wouldn't eat that uh, either. <laughs> like a Danish with a little uh, cleft in the middle of it. I, I don't want that. I don't want to eat one of those. Yeah. I don't want. I don't yeah. want anything to do with camels or toes. Or knuckles or mooses. <laughs> I mean, you don't you don't want like the little sweet insides, you know, just little like whatever the crevices hold or whatever. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Especially as after you've described wow. it, Leslie. Now I really don't want it. I really don't I, want it now. I think we're we're dangerously close to out nighting attack night attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is good. Good. Take that, you jerks. All right, hey, sorry, you're on the air and you got a question. What's going on? All right, so. I've been uh, following quite a few of the, uh, let's just say, the sad news people on YouTube that are going on about uh, all the stuff with EA and Blizzard, and it just gets me down. Um, what 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 do you think about all this? With you know the stocks going down, mm. EA they're not meeting what they wanted with uh, Battlefield Five. Activision Blizzard went down another 10%. They're going up. So mm. I just want to know what you think about that. Yeah, I actually have a lot of thoughts about this. And I shared a bunch of them on the Daily Tech News Show yesterday. And I'll reiterate a few of those. So apologies to anyone who's hearing this twice. But um, I believe that the, we're at a weird point in the gaming industry. It's never been bigger, by the way. But it's also never been broader. And by broader, I mean it is spread across more platforms there are more services, there are more options than there have ever been. And that includes everything from these big AAA companies and their titles all the way down to small independent projects by one or two people. And I love that breadth. I love the, that, that somebody small can break into it and make something amazing. And I love that big companies can continue to make big, you know, big hallmark sort of tentpole experiences as well. I do think, though, we are at a place where not just Fortnite, but other things in mobile, where Fortnite is also on mobile. Um, but we'll we'll focus on Fortnite for now. That thing is a is a disruption in a major major way. Now <clears throat> they've been able even, to even Netflix. Even Netflix is calling Fortnite a a, a competitor. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And social networks call it a competitor. That's where mm -hmm. kids are going to. They're, they're dropping Snapchat. They're dropping Instagram. Crazy. I mean, it's still those things are still there. But there's a lot of kids, a big percentage of which would rather go meet up in there and talk to their friends in there, even if they're not playing, even if they're just screwing around, they they see Fortnite as something much larger than just a game for their for their passing time. That being said, um, and that's, by the way, partly why you see these big companies trying to quickly grab onto some of this. Um, 
uh, Black Ops 4 is a attempt with black with the blackout mode to create a battle royale game and compete. And they turned that around rather quickly. Battlefield 5 has their thing coming out in March. Um, although I think that was a mistake to launch without it. That was really weird. And then yesterday or two days ago, you got Apex Legends, which kind of came yeah. out of nowhere, but it came from these Titanfall people who are Respawn, who used to be the Call of Duty people. Again, uh, a big company or a big uh, developer. They That's an EA joint, and they're already up to like three and a half million players. Like that's a legit piece of launch right there. That thing's doing really well. I played it a bunch yesterday, and it's great. Uh, but this genre that everybody sees as so disruptive will become like deathmatch it'll just become a thing that shooters have in it and we'll quit thinking of it as a separate thing after a while and that disruption will slow down and taste will change and people will move back around but i think that these stock problems and all these issues that, that everybody's having these adjustments they're having to make is absolutely a direct effect of everybody's attention on a free game by the way so they're not really having to pay for anything and when they do get hooked they end up paying and now that company's worth billions over, almost overnight they gain billions of dollars in value and those that money would have gone other places in gaming potentially so while i it bums me out too totally bums me out because oh, here's the other thing none of it lends itself well to a company like blizzard because blizzard is slow methodical iterate do we like it no cancel it start over take forever only announce it when we're kind of close then two years later finally get it like that's that's their mode and because that's their mode, this doesn't jive with them. You know, Blizzard, the idea that Blizzard would come out tomorrow with some thrown together battle royale mode for, say, uh, Overwatch, I mean, I'd play it, but that's not their way. Their way is different. And that way may not be good in terms of shareholders and people being happy about financial return. So it's a weird time. It is both an embarrassment of riches and disruptive right now. And Part of it is there's so many choices and options and so many people vying for your attention, including, like Brian said, Netflix and Hulu and all these other services that take your online time, that people are making a choice right now. The choice is this one game and that money is not being spent everywhere else. So it's just a weird time and uh, and a great question, by the way. I think that's absolutely mm -hmm. worth discussing. Yeah. Thanks for the call. It's like a, I don't know, man, it's a weird, it's a really weird time for video games and I can't believe just how disruptive Fortnite is. Especially given that when I play Fortnite, I don't like it. Uh, I try, and it's not because I'm bad at it. I can <laughs> no, compete. It's, it's the toxicity of, of sometimes of the uh, the other players. Well, it's that, but for me, it's more than that. It's the... Oh, hold on, let me answer this call. Uh, it's, it's more than that for me. It's the feeling of, I don't know how to build those stupid walls everybody's building. Not in an effective way. It's just not my kind of gameplay. So I don't actually understand why, but I also know I'm not the generation they're aiming for. So... So I totally get it. Uh, hi, you're on the air. Who's this? Well, good morning, gentlemen. It's Jessica from Southern California. Well, How are you? I'm good. Hey, you're so you're you? so sunny. You're like your home state here on the air. That's very nice. Well, you know, we're all freaking out because it's 40 degrees and there's frost on the ground. So, you oh know, gosh. hell's frozen over for us down here. No kidding. You guys are, uh, so what happens then? The whole city shuts down, right? When you're in California, <laughs> exactly. that happens. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, uh, welcome back to the show. It's nice to hear your voice. What would you like to ask us today or tell us? Okay, gentlemen, here's the question. If cartoon physics replaced real physics, what would you want to try? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Cartoon physics. Uh, I would let Tina hit me over the head with a frying pan so that my head was the shape of a frying pan until I went... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Okay, now I'm... Now I'm I was trying to think of one, and now you've you've, now you've now opened you're the in path. that world. I've got I've, I've gotten into the world. Yeah, you that. cracked open oh, the can. I'd run through a wall to have a brine shaped uh, hole. Oh uh, yeah, through the wall. That's pretty good. Um, I would. <laughs> this is really fun. All right, all right. I'd want a Wiley e. Coyote uh, style run out off the edge of a excuse me a desert cliff. Mm -hmm. Pause in the air look down notice there's nothing below me yeah and then my feet would fall my midsection oh, would fall oops. my head would, you would pull fall. out a sign that says oops oops yeah i'd hold out the oops <laughs> sign and i would go wee and then burr and i go way into the dirt but then i would somehow survive yeah because yeah, i'm course. a super be a little... genius yeah, yeah exactly all right so i want to do the run run in place thing for a second before i take off and go yeah, yeah, I want I want to be able to do that. Like somehow my brain is helping me suspend reality for just a second until I realize there's nothing there. 
and then I would fall. So now we ask you, what would you, since you asked the question, what would you want out of a cartoon yeah. physics world if you could? Turn it around on you. Oh, I'd want to do the, uh, I'd want to do the Wile E. Coyote paint a, uh, a tunnel onto a wall and have a train come through the wall. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty that good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So basically what we're saying is we want the Wile E. Coyote. Wheels. We want Road Ready Universe. Yeah. 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 I want to beep beep and then have bad things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for calling. It's always nice to hear from you. Uh, that number is 801-471-0462. I'd want to drive through my neighborhood and see the houses. Oh, they already do all look the same. Never mind. That oh, one, that one. that's oh. too bad. Hey, are you guys, uh, if I was to drive around our, oh, let's not even worry about it. We got a call. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to hear that question after this, though. No. Hi, who's this? Hello? Hello? Yes. This is Unmute your microphone. If you're unmuted, I'm hanging up on you now. Call back. Oh, try again. If I drove around Arvada, would I mostly see stucco for the general mm. designs, or do you guys go a different way? No, you'd see, um, uh, like, not vinyl siding, well, aluminum or vinyl siding. A lot of siding. You'd okay. A lot of that. A lot of brick. Yeah. Okay. A lot of uh, what's that stuff? A... For, what's that stuff? Do you ever do? You ever have a lot of tin roofs, or is it all like normal? Uh... Tin roof. <laughs> Rusted. <laughs> Is that what um, she says? Yeah, she says tin roof rusted. She does? Yeah. What did I you never think? knew. Oh, I, I thought it was something roof and then busted or something. I, I, I never knew. I guess I just never knew what she said. <laughs> it doesn't make sense that she says it, but what tin she is saying is roof. tin roof. I give me she's describing the, the roof of the love shack is tin and rusted. Oh, ew. Okay, that's fine. That has connotations. But uh, they're from, uh, where are they from? They're from Georgia, from right? Athens, Athens, Georgia. Yeah. So if they're from Georgia, oh, they have a lot of tin roofs down Famous. there is all I was going to say. Same as REM. Yeah. Yep. Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? Whoops, sorry. This is Robin. Hello, Robin. How Hi, are you? Robin. I'm okay. How are you? Uh, we're fantastic. So nice to hear your yeah. voice. Where, Robin, where do you come from? Or live? West Valley. <laughs> oh, West Valley. You're all right over here. Oh, oh, very oh. nice. Oh. My, yeah. You my, could, uh, yeah. just opened your window and yelled instead of using Skype. Sure, we're not that far from each other. Actually, Nick is in your neck of the woods today um, interviewing for a, a job at, what's it called? Red Wing? Have you heard of this? It's like shoes. Yeah, Red Wing shoes. Oh, yeah. They do like yeah, work yeah, shoes. Yeah. yeah, he loves his boots and shoes he gets there, so he thought he'd apply, and they and they really were impressed, and now he's in their first, first interview, and he's wearing a suit today. Like He's all dressed up with his curly long hair and then a suit. It's great. Anyway, oh, I don't, fun. yeah, I don't know why I brought all that up, but uh, what's on your mind today? Oh. What kind of question do you have? Well, I want to know what each of your favorite books was, mm -hmm. and secondly, what you've read multiple times. Oh man! Oh, so favorite favorite uh, books? Is that what you said? Book. Just yes. trying to cut off. Let's me. say okay. single book. You say single book can be a series. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. What do you say, Brian? What's your favorite? Um. It's uh, I think it's Survivor by Chuck Palahniuk because um, I had seen Fight Club and I'm like oh I want to I want to maybe check out a Chuck Palahniuk book I was hooked from the very first page of um, of the book Survivor it has nothing to do by the way with the um, with the reality show but that one hooked oh thank me. God <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, did you say oh thank God yeah she's very happy yes. to hear that there's nothing yes. to do with it yeah. Um, I can't think of any book I've read more than once. I figure once I've read a book, I got uh, there's so many books I want to read that I just want to move on to another book. I will say that something I have read multiple times, and uh, you know, the purists out there, that's not a book, Brian, is um, the Dark Phoenix Saga. Like I have the uh, the graphic novel, and it is my favorite comic uh, story arc ever. Oh, nice. All right, so there's that. I, I, um, I'm going to go my favorite series and my favorite single book, and then those series that may take over for that if I continue to enjoy it as much as I am. So uh, for my favorite series of all time is Stephen King's The Dark Tower series. I love that series. I've read it multiple times. Uh, that being said, I've actually read more times The Stand by Stephen King. I don't actually put that on my favorite list. It's probably my top ten, but uh, for whatever reason, I've read that book like six times. Um, there's something about that world and stuff that I just absolutely loved. <clears throat> but my favorite single standalone book is probably American Gods. Um, I'm not up on the show, so I don't know how they're doing over there. But the, the book is amazing by Neil Gaiman. 
Um, one of my favorite books ever. I just love that book. And then uh, I'm currently reading, well, I guess this is an offshoot of the normal First Law series, but the First Law series by Joe Abercrombie is this uh, amazing fantasy series that is like what Brian described as not being able to put it down. That's how I am with this series. I just could not stop reading it until I was through with the first trilogy. I'm currently on a book called Best Served Cold, which is in that same universe, but different characters, some crossover. I thought that would be weird. It's actually really good. He's got a whole new series, a whole new trilogy coming out set in the same universe. It's amazing. So things the way things are going this might take over for my favorite series or at least my favorite fantasy series for sure um so now we turn it on you what's your favorite book oh, yeah. or series of books oh i'm i'm too um i'm way out of, of where i should be because i'm way too old for the, for harry potter to be my favorite series but yeah. it is <laughs> yeah no there's nothing wrong with that there's no yeah. limit no limit at all in fact, exactly. I, I have read yeah. those books in audio form and regular reading versions of those books about five, six times myself over all, all of those that series. It's still in my – that's in my top five. I don't think you should have feel any shame about that. I don't care how old no, you no. get. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, there is there is no – like if you said I'm on my seventh reading of Goodnight Moon, then I think we'd worry about you. But, um, <laughs> Every, but the Harry Potter series, absolutely. Yeah, uh, if you're still into everybody poops and you've read it eight, right. nine times, <laughs> exactly. you might, might have trouble. <laughs> But, uh, but no, like the, the HP books, I mean, they've been, sure, the first book maybe seemed aimed at kids, and sure, it was Scholastic was the publisher at the time and all of that, but I think she had always intended it to go places that would appeal to massive audiences. Well, obviously, it's one of the most, you know, best-selling book series of eternity. No one will ever match it, as far as I know. And uh, yeah, you should never feel bad about that. I went to, dude, I went to the last three books launches, midnight launches. I never do that for anything. And I no, went to those Harry no. Potter book launches, which is not me. I don't do that. I hate that normally. Well, that's cool that you did that. We went out to a um, uh, place at Point of the Mountain. I can't even remember what, it, what it's called down there because I haven't been there a long time. But they had the... Um, oh, Traverse Mountain, is that the, it? The the one by Alpine? That new stuff, the stores, all the like the Cabela's and all that over there? Um, no, it's, I don't know why I can't think of it. Anyway, they have a Megaplex theater there that did the Harry Potter, um, marathon when they released the last movie. Mm -hmm. And from the time we left home till we got back, it was 24 hours. Oh, and wow. we watched all seven of those movies. Oh my gosh, see, you're all awesome. All eight of those movies back to back. Hats off to you. That's great. I think you're thinking of, you must be talking of Thanksgiving Point. Is that what you're thinking of? Yes, exactly. Uh, okay, yeah, exactly. that's exactly a cool area over there actually all that point. yeah isn't that dumb yeah, they, the guy who the guy who founded word perfect founded thanksgiving oh. point so <laughs> oh really yeah so he has all this money just gobbles of money that he made in the 80s and 90s with word perfect sells all that to corel or whoever it was walks out with a million billion dollars you know who knows how much money he had yeah. and the first thing he does is buys up this huge hunk of land just over the point of mountain in, in lehigh calls it thanksgiving point and now it is this massive combination of like petting zoos and specialty gardening space and sculptures and art and they have fairs there and then they have restaurants and like all this stuff in the middle. There's now a theater there, like you mentioned, a great big one. And um, uh, what else? Oh, and now there's like business parks and stuff like IBM and, and, and Microsoft have their headquarters in these places or their, their Utah headquarters anyway. It's like this amazing Thanksgiving place. Thanksgiving point sounds like a place where the pilgrims would go to make out. It really does. <laughs> it's like, take off your tall hat there, Sarah, and meet me up I'll at Thanksgiving point. I'll see you at 10 p.m. at Thanksgiving point. <laughs> Please, I'll roast you a turkey if yeah. you know what I mean. I'll carve you. <laughs> bring, bring something. So I, I want to see your ankles today. That's I'll what I want to do. Potatoes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, so, uh, West Valley. Please have a fantastic day. She seems very nice, and I liked her she a lot. Does. Uh, we'll take one more if people want to call it in. It's uh, 801-471-0462. And, and our roofs are uh, um, are just standard uh, shingles. Shingles, here. like uh, yeah. the, the, the kind you put down the with the study. The disease you get <laughs> the if you disease. had uh, chicken pox. Uh, hi, you're on the air. Who is this? Hello? Hello. Oh, I think it's that person again. It looks like the same number. I think they're having Aww. issues with their phone. It's coming from a phone line. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, oh, you're there. Hi. Hello. 
Sorry, my browser wouldn't let me select a microphone. Oh, no oh. worries. <laughs> That may have been. Was that you before when I couldn't get you either? Was that you the last time? It was. Oh, I'm no so worries. Embarrassed. No, don't be embarrassed at all. It's all <laughs> the good. Calls are coming from inside the house, Scott. <laughs> Tech is weird. We understand. It's all good. Uh, who are you? Who is this? Your name's so familiar, or your voice rather. Who is this? Yeah. Uh, this is Bill. Bill. Uh, I was going to say, it sounds no. like a contestant it's on Bill. America's yeah. Next Top Podcast. It's freaking Bill. I should have known. Yeah. <laughs> Because it sounds, but you know what it is? It's a little more modulated on the on this thing, and so I wasn't Skype, quite yeah. sure. So anyway, Bill, it's lovely to have you. What's on your mind? Well, I was wondering what you guys thought was going to happen with E3 this year. Now that Sony has decided they're not going. Uh, all right. Oh, so I've, I didn't hear about that. Really, Sony's not going to. Oh have, yeah. Uh, they announced it a couple months ago. They were uh, like, "We're not going. We're done. Not done. They're just not going this year." So this is an interesting question, and I do have an answer for this. And 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 here's what I'm, here's my thinking. <clears throat> I already felt like E3 is becoming less and less significant. It matters less and less every year, and the reason it matters less and less isn't their fault. It's just the way things are changing. Uh, companies can have their own massive announcements and reach a ton of people without a closed press event. Closed press events. Are, are great and all, but that's back when all we could do is wait for GameStop or, or Spot, rather, or someone else to post what they saw at E3. It doesn't work that way anymore. A company like Nintendo, who is already doing this to some degree, uh, although they have kind of a presence there, but they don't do the big you know keynote there anymore because they do their video thing, and it goes to as many or more people who get informed about their games. Um, Sony has their own event every year, or at least usually they do, the PSX event. Um, other companies are less and less involved uh, and don't need to be there. Rockstar's never there. Blizzard's usually not there, although they did some mm -hmm. stuff last year. But they avoid that thing because, A, it's super expensive and a huge pain in the butt, and, B, we now live in a time where you can control it all yourself, put it on your own Twitch channels, hire a bunch of influencers and have them do it. Whatever it is, you can get the word out without a giant announcement at, a, at an event like E3. So I think there's just the significance of that event is getting less and less. More importantly, though, their decision to do this is an interesting one because it does give Microsoft an opportunity here. We're about to have a turnover on generations, potentially. PS5, Xbox, whatever's next. And this could be the year for Microsoft to really step it up, announce something early, be the only big thing that happens there announcement-wise that doesn't involve Sony and capture the hearts and minds of a lot of players and get excited about the next generation of hardware. That's entirely possible. I already like the direction Microsoft's going in, generally speaking. I think Game Pass is amazing. I think that their decision to have a lot of cross-play stuff happening between PC and console is really good. Like, they're, they're uh, bought and are building up a lot of internal studios. Like, there's a lot happening at Microsoft that, that really sets them up for killing it, whatever this next generation is. And they and it would be time for that. It's also time for Sony to get a little cocky and not pay attention to these issues and kind of lose out on being the first to 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 make a noise. So I think Microsoft has a chance to kick them in the in the ass at E3 if they play their cards right. We'll see. And then there's still the question of whether E3 is as impactful as it needs to be or used to be. But either way, I think Microsoft takes advantage of this and it puts Sony on the back foot a little bit. So we'll see. That's my thinking. How about you, Bill? What do you think is going to happen? I think it's... And the part of me thinks that this might be the first crack in the armor or the first crack in the wall. And E3 is going to start falling apart after this because unless Microsoft does exactly what you just said, I think that they're going to make the same decision and they're going to say, it's not worth it, worth it for us to go. And you're right, Nintendo already does their own... Um, you know, their Nintendo Directs. So, you know, I wonder if E3 is going to slowly disappear or if it'll just be an event where everybody kind of puts out their videos all at the same time yeah. and people don't go. Yeah, I think that there's a real, a real strong chance of that, regardless of what Microsoft does this year, in the long term anyway, whether that's a year, two years, three years, who knows. But I think that this, this things are changing there. And with so many fan conventions where actual players get to play your games, like PAX and a million others why would you throw all your your money at this one event that is a closed for the most part they do have a you know they have a crowd day but now they didn't used to but it's mostly press it's mostly closed door it's mostly the old way of doing things and i think that's 
going away. Brian, any any thoughts? I, I agree. I mean, you know, there was that same uh, talk of doom and gloom when Apple pulled out of Macworld mm-hmm. and started doing their own events. And Macworld's still going fine, but uh, but it seems like a way better scenario for Apple to be able to have full control over when and how they they announce their products. Yeah, they just don't so. need it anymore. And they don't this, need it. In yeah. the same way, I believe it's true that Sony doesn't need it. I don't I think yeah. I don't think Nintendo needs it and Microsoft so that's why I'm just saying this just puts Microsoft in a position where they either have to decide they also don't need it or they want to make a big noise come June and For use sure. this to their advantage and I think that's what they're going to do cuz they've not they've announced that they're there and everything's you know going forward as planned so there's no way they just get up and do some average keynote there's no way they're going to try to get ahead of this and I think smartly they should they're in a they're in a distant second place this generation. If they want to get back at it, they got to do something, and I think they're capable of doing it. But I just need to see what they do. So I don't know. It is a fascinating. I love this part of the industry. Like talking about Fortnite being a big disruptor and all that is also really interesting to me. The the big goings on is always fascinating to me. I love playing games. Love it. Love it. Love it. But I also just love watching it all work. These big gears turning. Giant companies making bad decisions, little companies making great decisions, and then watching them grow until they make a bad decision. It's just, I don't know, it's fun. So, <laughs> you know what? I mistakenly said that Macworld you know, continues on with Apple. I guess not. The uh, <laughs> 2014 was the last Macworld. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, they stopped. They They're still, done. They're I thought out. they were still going on. Like, still having the expo out there, and it was just a place for all the... Um, the vendors that make Apple products. To I show guess up. the Worldwide Developer Conference Week has now replaced it. I guess. I think so. Yeah. Well, there you go. You never know, Bill. I hope to see you one day at a con that isn't that. And good luck on the competition show, by the way. Yeah, if you well, you. good you. luck if you're still in it. I don't know because oh, yeah. um, maybe you're as in of it. the release of the first episode. You're still in it, but who knows? Yeah, who knows if you're still in it? Who knows? Yeah. I'm I, a judge. I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later, man. He's awesome. I like him. <laughs> Agreed. And so the other contestants know that may or may not still be in it. Right. Him calling and having a fun conversation does not sway my judgment one way or the other. Okay. No. My judgment no. is purely on the shows they create for that competition, and that's it. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's how. Yeah, exactly. That's how it has to be done. By the way, um, yeah. for those of you who do uh, do subscribe to the feed, um, the submissions for Food Week are going up. Um, today so oh, the three podcasts that the teams did for food week are going to be going up so you can listen to their submissions yeah that was an interesting week it was it was a very interesting week yeah, yeah. no question about it all right uh quick email before we go this came to us from mike he used the website to do this over at frogpants.com slash tms and he says the following uh, the subject line is life emulating art tms twbd and he explains listening to tms 1646 Wandering into Mulva territory this morning. It's a great title. <laughs> Wish I could watch live. Work is there. Blocks your site. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it says, I'm not a super long time listener of TMS, but from what I've heard, the toothpick drop slash recovery slash omission uh, consumption, uh, that is probably the most Nash thing I have ever heard you admit doing in real life thus far. <laughs> I wonder how many parallels we'll find, Mike. Uh, yeah, some of I'll also point this out. It's totally something Nash Magard of the Solar Mines would do. If you don't know who that is or what I'm talking about, check out therewillbedungeons.com and you can listen to our D&D show we do on the weekends. Uh, my character there, his name is Nash, and he is kind of so gross. so Nash. He's kind of <laughs> gross. He makes bad choices. He's kind of a, he's he's kind of terrible in lots of ways, and this is absolutely something he would have done, but it would also have included like a skin tag and a mole, and who else knows what would have fallen in that pot. <laughs> Because he's just freaking gross. Uh, so anyway, you guys should check that show out. It's uh, lots of fun. And thanks, Mike, for the email. If you'd like to send your own in, the morning stream at gmail.com. Or like I said, you can use the site at frogpants.com slash TMS. Now, a quick reminder, tomorrow we have a show at 3.30. We call it TMS PM. It's on Fridays. We do it because of your support at patreon.com slash TMS. Uh, you'll find the patron links everywhere on the site as well. So no excuse not to see it. If you like the show, you like what we're producing, consider supporting us means a lot to us and huge thanks to those who do again that is patreon.com slash tms i think that's it do you have any other shows today or anything going on you want people to know about uh we're recording the pokemon podcast live uh pokemon go podcast live at uh, 5 30 but i've actually got a meeting with the um 
the guys who do the D and D um, CrossFit thing. Oh, um, I want to hear about that more. Yeah. So yeah, so I don't know if I'm actually even going to be on Pokemon Go podcast today, but uh, if I am, then you'll find it. Uh, you know, tune in after skim, right. <laughs> basically at twitch.tv slash Pokemon Go podcast. Nice. Uh, also later today, let's see, an hour and a half from now or so, I will start. What I hope is the final leg of my run through Soma, because that thing oh, terrified wow. nice. me last week. Gosh, dang it. There's this creature called a... What's he called? I forgot. But he's this... He's basically, Brian, a big seven-foot fall tur- a tall turd with, like, legs. And he can yeah. hear everything. And he's making these horrible noises. He's covered in barnacles and weird little freaking fleshy holes. And, and he'll, he'll walk into the room just going... Eh. And I have no weapons, nothing to do. He can't see me, but I have to hold completely still. And if I move anything and bump a book off a shelf and it falls, this thing comes yeah. tearing into the room. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I hate it's it. It's like Big Daddy when, uh, in uh, um, uh, Bioshock. Bioshock. Yeah, when you a make little any bit. noise and it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. And they say, I'm, uh, some have played, a third illusion says I'm very close to the end. So I'm glad to hear that because that, those things freaking me, freak me out. But, um, <laughs> We're making good progress. That'll be today. Uh, be here at noon. We'll go till 2 for Frog Pants Plays. Uh, and you can catch those repeats on both YouTube and the Twitch VODs, of course, if you're not able to be there live. And then tonight, Skim, 5 to 6, Kim finds out what I put in her jambalaya. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my gosh. Um, which I ate plenty of, so, you know, yeah. all is well. Yeah, well, of course, you're, you're eating your own excretions is no big deal. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> my own earwax and spit. Exactly. Uh, Brian, you want a song, a song for us to sing? I will song a song for you. All right. Song us a song. You're the song song. Great. Uh, greetings, Scott and Brian. I'd like to request a song for my girlfriend's birthday on the 6th, says Adam M. Mm. If you can't play it on that day, any day close to it will work, including the 7th. A little over five years ago, she was in a car accident that almost took her life, but fortunately, it only took one of her arms. Every day, she amazes me at whether it's what she can accomplish by herself or how her spirit is never dampened by her limited appendages you're a wonderfully talented woman christy and i look forward to the many many years ahead of us i'd like to hear if i ain't got you originally done by alicia keys and covered by scary pockets um if this song is not available blah 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 thank you signed adam m mm. i had never heard of the band scary pockets by no, the way me and, either. Uh, Brand new to me. Uh, they do nothing but covers and i bought all 12 albums today <laughs> spent Jeez. i went to their band camp page and bought everything wow. uh, that they make so okay. oh it's good stuff too right. their cover of smells like teen spirit is brilliant well you're gonna hear it now hear it now um hey adam and uh, christy uh congratulations on your uh, indomitable spirit and your your love for each other this is uh um, a request I'm so, so happy to play for you guys. Uh, here is Scary Pockets, or here are Scary Pockets, from their album New Funk from 2017. Here is If I Ain't Got You. See you tomorrow for TMS PM. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Massive wiener. Mm-hmm.